Um, can we hold them to that? Can, can we hold them to that? Delivering pizza to bars anytime, anywhere? Man. I feel like I'm Persona 4. Can do. Hello and welcome to Tea Time with Torloth. Today's tea... Vanilla Earl Grey. Anyway, uh, today's topic is Resident Evil 3 Remake, which seems to be very divisive online, and I kind of get it, but at the same time, I got a lot to say. But if you're here for a spoiler-free recommendation or review, it's coming up right now. So, I love the new Resident Evil 3. It's about what I expected, I avoided a lot of the pre-release information, so I went in with the clearest palette I could. I'm not going to discuss the content versus value in this video, because that's a whole other discussion, and one I should just do as a separate video. I'll do it later. But here's my spoiler free thoughts. This was a cool way to bring back the old Resident Evil 3. It's short, just like the original, does a lot of the same things in different ways. Tree to bring a lot more of the action movie elements that brought us Resident Evil 4. And I think 4 was great for the time, but it brought us the less than stellar Resident Evil 5 and 6. But now, we're talking about Nemesis. However, like I said, the game is short, and if you're only interested in the single player, you might want to just wait for a sale. Now, the game does come with Resistance. Also, that's a very interesting mode, and it looks... It lo I looked at it in the beta last week, so you can look at that video for more of my thoughts, but the unlock system has me a little worried with loot boxes and XP boosters. Now, it appears to link to a store page, but there's nothing there yet, but I want to be clear, I'm not a fan of a game that has microtransactions that cost full price, or even cost money up front. It's really hard for me to swallow, so I don't like that. So, my conditional recommendation is this. If you want to play Project Resistance and Resident Evil 3, I think there's $60 of value there. If you just want to play Resident Evil 3, wait. And even if you wait and there's a sale and you can try Project Resistance then, and maybe there'll be a bunch of patches and it'll be much better. Alright, now we're getting into the spoiler territory, so if you don't want to be spoiled on this version and the original, click off now. Spoiler warning, Akiko, activate. So this game wastes little time introducing the nemesis. This is very different from the old game, but I like it. It explains why Jill's apartment was collapsing, why she's blown out onto the street. Jill's path makes a lot more sense this time. But we'll get into that. I'm gonna start with Brad, Brad Vickers, as he was very much the coward in the original, and he just runs right past Jill after he breaks out of a bunker. But the other thing I noticed was that they did a lot of parallels with the original, and a lot of things happen in the same spots, just at different times. So let's, let's talk about the bar. Now the bar in the original you had to get into to get the lighter. So you could get past the gate farther down the street. Now you pass through the bar being chased by zombies. Red gets bit like he does in the original. And Jill moves on acquiring a new handgun. So I've seen a lot of complaints online about Brad being a zombie in front of the police station. And that doesn't happen in the original, he gets killed by Nemesis. But if you remember, in the original version of 2, after you beat the game, Brad be a zombie in front of the station, and when you killed him, he dropped a key. On one hand, I understand why people are upset that it's not the same, but on the other hand, I was just happy to play, be able to see some of Raccoon City again. I was happy that some of the best parts were back. And some of the worst parts were gone. Now Jill is supposed to get on top of the parking garage to 
and get Yvette by this helicopter. And Nemesis downs it. Just like what happens in the clock tower in the original. I think a lot of the complaints about the game being just different are kind of weird and did you want to play the same game again? Because it still exists, you can still play it. Emulators exist, you can just go play the, the Dreamcast or the PlayStation version to your heart's content. You wanted a, a reimagining and you were sad to see the Gravedigger go? I've seen this come up a lot, the Gravedigger's gone. I mean, it was a giant worm. Maybe that was your favorite part, but that part's boring. Don't like it. <laughs> I never liked it. The first appearance is knocked off part of the sidewalk and you had to flip two switches and then get up a ladder and there were holes everywhere and he'd kind of pop out and, and jump at you. And then his second appearance was in the park, which doesn't exist here, where you learn about the supervisors. I don't know if the supervisors even exist in this one, because they were ill-explained in the original anyway. Light a fire in a fireplace, knock out a pillar, walk back out, and then for some reason the park graveyard collapses and there's a big U-shaped arena where you have to get the gravedigger to come up in just the right spot so you can electrocute it and kill it with a lamp. I don't miss it. It was not good. And anyone who tells you it was like the best part of the game is lying. Because there were a lot better parts of Resident Evil 3. The other thing I've seen criticized a lot is that Jill doesn't go to the police station. In the original, the whole reason Jill goes to the police station is to get her lockpicks. You think Jill being part of a crime family, she would have had gear stashed somewhere. Or is that not canon anymore? I mean, the family tree and backstory is not important because she's also supposed to be half French, half Japanese. Nikolai's still an asshole. <laughs> Actually, they turned his asshole nature up to 11, if not 12. So, good on you, Capcom. Good on you. So the big change is, is at the end of part A, Jill gets on the train, well, it goes back to get on the train and Nemesis is chasing her, so she leads it off and you get that cinematic fight well the fight there's the fight inside where he's chasing you and you blow up a barrel and he does the mr x <clears throat> pose and you break out and he's still chasing you i think capcom nailed getting across that this is a dangerous enemy just by the way he stalks and attacks you when you least expect it even if they could have hit it a little better I would actually argue that the new appearances of Nemesis are far more terrifying because there's other zombies there. Other zombies are annoying because they'll stop you dead in your tracks and Nemesis can catch up to you and... Which isn't super fun, but... Yeah, so Carlos does the trip to RPD that are just better done. Like the substation. Holy crap. Can we talk about how gross this segment of the game is? And people are like, eh, it's some sort of porn. No, no, there, there are insects that do this. Ugh. The invasive parasite attack. And it teaches you right, the game teaches you right away that all you have to do is take an herb and you can throw them up. And it was an effective tool that made me never want that to happen again. So I was extra vigilant and I shot a lot more bullets than I normally would in that section. So the way my mother kind of described it as we she watched us play through the whole game, my brother and myself, um, it was kind of like they took what happened in the original and shuffled a deck of cards and then put the, laid them out in a specific order until they got to the helicopter rescue at the end with Carlos <laughs> and I think that's fair because some of the stuff they cut just didn't make sense now I've seen a lot of people criticize the emission of the clock tower and the park and the reworking of the dead factory into nest 2 now I played the original recently and there is a massive plot issue with Carlos the Carlos section in Resident Evil 3. Why does he know there's a vaccine at the hospital in that version? He just goes there because it's a hospital? In the remake, he knows that Dr. Bard is there, and he's been working on the vaccine, and wants evac, and he asks for stars specifically. So this makes better sense, and a lot of the retcons are like this, just to make the game 
transition smoothly. Resident Evil 2 is the more content. It's the actual. <laughs> okay, let me let me put it this way. Story goes that Capcom had made a deal with Sony to sell three Resident Evil games on the PlayStation. Three numbered Resident Evil games. But they were already working on Code Veronica for the Dreamcast. Now, the reason Code Veronica is called Code Veronica is because it's the actual Resident Evil 3. It's the actual story. One. But they had to do a third one on the PlayStation. So Resident Evil 3 is actually a spin-off game. Resident Evil 3 was always pretty linear. So it did have a lot of backtracking. And there is some of that, but ultimately they just decided to make the game more linear this time around. And I think that's fine. If you don't like the fact that this is a more linear Resident Evil, that's fine. You're allowed your opinion. And you're allowed not to like it. But I'm also allowed to go and make a video that's probably like 20 something minutes long to explain why I liked it. Now, I, I will freely accept the criticism that the game is short. I will also freely accept the criticism that the game is maybe not worth full price for just the single player. But for me, I didn't care. I was going to play the game regardless. And I think it's fun. I still don't think it's better than 2. The reality is that the fans... Of Resident Evil but unrealistic expectations on this remake they wanted it to be all these things that it just wasn't and that's the truth is you can make ultimately make your own decision you can decide that this game isn't worth it for you and you can skip it you can watch the archives of my streams I'll put them up on YouTube if people want it took me six hours to beat the first campaign and I died a bunch because I was overconfident and didn't want to use my shotgun a lot. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. If you would like, you can subscribe, like, follow, comment, whatever. Tweet at me. I would appreciate it very much. And regardless of how crappy I feel right now as the maybe making a really long video explaining nothing and just rambling, I want you all to have a good day and to stay safe in these trying times. Oh, my hair's so bad, I want to stay. <laughs> Until next time, Matane.